<laughs> hello and welcome back to, uh, hold on. Oh, hello and welcome back to the, uh, I forgot what I thought. Oh yeah, MG, the 2000 MG, MG Cup Series season. We have, I, I'm not sure what race of the season this is on the last count, but it's time for, uh, Texas. So, um, yeah, drivers will be kind of getting to know this new package at these different mile and a half, like Texas and Atlanta, they're all, they're all different, so, I don't know, some, some of them might drive good, and some might, some might produce just wreck bests, so, uh, yeah, we're gonna, it's gonna be a learning experience here today, but, <clears throat> luckily, we, we still, we're still gonna have some fun, okay? Anyways, on pole is the 20 of Tony Stewart, followed by the 2 of Kirk Bush, or excuse me, the 2 of Rusty Wallace. Behind them is Matt Kenseth and Jeff Gordon. Rounding up the top 5 is Dale Jarrett. And Blue Elliott says his outside is 6th. Alright, now pace car is in. We're getting ready for the drop of the green flag. And here we go. Green flag is out. We're racing in Texas. Tony Stewart pulls out in front, but here comes Matt Kenseth on the inside looking for the lead. Side by side for the lead down the back stretch, and we're already going three wide further back. Three wide, Kevin Harvick and Kurt. And R Ricky Rudd getting to the inside of Kurt Busch. They pass him, but now Kurt's still stuck on the high side as Robbie Gordon and Boris Sed get to this inside. And they're four wide up here. Looking at five wide. They're getting crazy already. Four wide off a of turn two. And that's not going to end well. Dale Jr.'s in the wall with Tony Stewart. Big wreck going to happen here on lap two. These drivers getting way too aggressive early on. And a massive pileup already. Oh, man, they're still wrecking. They're still hitting hard. Rusty Wallace out of the race from that as he was just trying to drive away from the wreck. And when the caution is going to come out instantly. So we're going to take a look at um, what happened, I guess. We're going on board with Terry Labonte. For the, oh, I went too far back. Oh, I didn't even see that. Jason Heddleski down on the apron. So that takes Texas Terry pretty much out of this race before it really even got started. Um, but we're going to go back, take another look from a different uh, angle of it. So, coming off of turn two, they're four wide, end of the wall. Most of the field escaped it and then Kyle Petty back across the track and into the wall nowhere for Michael Walter to go and all these guys get piled up further into the corner it's almost like three separate wreck separate wrecks happened but no they were all all one giant wreck kind of got stringed out so uh <clears throat> caution is out we're gonna a quick break and come right back to the drop of the green flag. And we are back here at Texas. As we're pacing off a of turn two. The leader is Dave Blaney. Once again, out in front here, he led last week at Bristol, and now is out in front here today in Texas. 
didn't quite pick up the win, but led a good amount of laps there. And, uh, made his name, made his name known. I mean, his name was already known, but you know what I mean. Uh, anyway, <laughs> um, <clears throat> coming off the of turn four, the pace car is in. Getting ready for the drop of the green flag. And green flag is out. Now, from what I've heard, there's a lot of tire wear at this track. I mean, the tires wear very, very quickly. After, like, three laps, their tires are done. Cooked. You have to, uh, you can only take it flat out for about three laps. And then you have to kind of lift off the gas. So this might be a, a race of who can save their stuff the best. As we're three wide, once again... Side by side for the lead. Jeff Burton on the high side trying to get that run off. Couldn't quite get the run. Bobby Labonte clears him. Here comes Dale Jarrett on the inside. Jeff Gordon behind him. He's looking underneath Jarrett. Matt Kenseth on pit road having some sort of an issue here. <clears throat> Field is pretty spread out after that wreck. Matt Kenseth coming out of pit road now. <clears throat> three wide further back and three wide up front. Jeff Burton back on the inside of Jimmy Johnson and Ricky Rudd trying to take second back as Bobby Labonte kind of checks out, at least for, for the moment. Further back, Joe Nemechek underneath Jimmy Spencer. Now here comes... Uh, Jeremy Mayfield and Jack Sprague is having an issue. That's going to check everybody up, and they're all wrecking. Chris Mack in the 86 getting straightened out there. Oh, and a big hit. A car is upside down. That's, that is Joe Nemechek that just flipped over on the backstretch. We have a massive wreck here, and the car is going to come right back out. We might get a red flag here for that one. Let's take a look. They're all checking up. And they just ran out of room. Poor Chris Mack tried to squeeze by on the high side and get sent around. Poor Ken Trader gets spun up there. He was pretty much ahead of it when it started. And oh, a massive hit right to the passenger side door of that 25. And um, that car did a whole rollover and came back down on all four wheels. We're going to take another look at it from a different angle here. <laughs> Sorry. Yep, there they are, wrecking. And uh, pretty much they pushed the 86 back straight. There's a lot of grip uh, that was added to this track on from the track I and I. So, of course, the physics are going to be a little weird. Oh, my goodness, Scott Wimmer just flew through all of that. So, Chris Mack's going to escape without any severe damage. The field slows down. We're under caution once again. We're going to take another quick break. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the MG Cup Series at Texas on Fox. As, uh, John Andretti is leading the pack. Not leading the race, but he's in front of everyone here. Bobby Labonte is actually in the lead, so Andretti has a chance to uh, try to keep his lap here. As we're going to go green this time. Bye, and there we go. Green flag is out. Bobby Labonte with a great restart there. Trying to get to the outside of Andretti. Could not quite get there. He's still clear, can try to hop back down to the bottom, but he's committed to the outside line. Here comes Dale Earnhardt Jr., last week's winner at Bristol on the inside. And look at that, Kenny Wallace. Kenny Wallace showing his face here. 
He's up into the mix. Three wide for the lead. John Andretti trying to drive away. Looking at four wide as Dale Jarrett sticks his nose in there. Oh man, they are all over the place. They're trapped in their way past uh, John Andretti. Andretti's going to get the draft of Kenny, uh, Kenny Wallace. It almost looks like some sort of a pack race, or this is pack race stuff. It almost looks like some sort of a race at Talladega or Daytona, the way they're going at it. Draft. It's very important here. It's like the 2020 NASCAR Cup Series uh, aero package on the mile and a half and intermediate. Uh, intermediate. It's, what? The package on a mile and a half and super speedways super speedways being like Michigan and Auto Club stuff like that not the actual super speedways because if we think about it tracks that are over two miles are technically they're super speedways that's what that's what the definition of a super speedway is so yeah those tracks over two miles and mile and a half this is that type of package but just Way higher horsepower, but draft is very important. And they stay they stay together for pretty much the entirety of the race, rather than kind of filing out a little bit. They seem to be they seem to be handling it pretty well right now. Further back, Dale Jr. doesn't really want any part of this. Oh, and. Chris Mack door slams the 90 of Jason Hedelski. And he gets up into the outside wall. He is pushing that thing hard. Trying to get back up into the mix. Up into the outside wall once again here. He's starting to feel that tire wear. He done pushed his, pushed his car so hard. Looking to get back to the inside. They're three wide. And he somehow kept it off of, or kept it from wrecking. There, look at this pack. Three wide, three rows of three wide. This cannot keep up for much longer. I mean, this just, this just can't. And they're somewhat drafted behind, or bump drafted behind them. So these. These four, five, six, trying to keep up with the lead pack as they're all over the place up here. Three, looking at four, maybe even five wide if they can get past Michael Walter. If they're all checked, they're all getting checked up here. Oh, and the caution is out. So it looks like we had a wreck. Where's the back? Yeah, the caution is out. And I believe Dave Blaney is your leader. So let's see what happened to Chris Mack. He's been involved in another one. This has not been his season. He hasn't finished a race so far. Oh. He was struggling for grip, but once he finally got it, he kind of shot down the hill a little bit. And there was Boris said on his inside. Very unfortunate for the two of them. Just ran out of room there. I'm not sure how they made it that, that long. Anyways, we're going to go, we're going to have a quick break, and we'll be right back for the drop of the green. Welcome back. The green flag is out. 
Brett Bodine is your leader. Robbie Gordon in second, looking to the high side, trying to get the lead from Brett here. Couldn't quite get there. We turn my Robbie Gordon looking to the inside. Dave Blaney going to follow him. Now it looks like he's going to try to take it three wide for the lead. He's confident he can get back up there and get back out in front. John Andretti still in the mix. He, remember, he's a lap down. Ken Schrader. He's in the picture. I mean, a lot of these guys. Oh, no. Look at looking that four wide. Chris Mack trying to work his way back up. That damage doesn't seem to be slowing him down too much. I mean, he's, it's going to be hard. It's going to be much harder for him to handle it, but he's still keeping it somewhat. He's still keeping it straight. He's still got a lot of speed in that thing. So four wide, looking at four wide off a of turn two here. They go back down to three, but that got close. That's Bobby Labonte goes out to the lead now. <clears throat> so Labonte is <clears throat> Labonte is back out in front. Excuse me. All right, I am back. Sorry, I had to uh, clear my throat. But um, here comes Ricky Craven to the lead. Kenny Schrader, I believe, took the lead for a second. Now here comes Greg Biffle. We haven't seen him. He's the fifth Roush car in this race. We haven't seen him that much this season. He hasn't been running as well as his four teammates. He probably hasn't adjusted to this new aero package. But we are at the track where um, Pyrus Racing's last driver was unfortunately injured and that ended his career, which is why Chris Mack is here. We haven't talked much about this this season, but Fred Jones was injured in the crash here in Texas and Chris Mack just wants <laughs> sorry. He wants to finish this race to uh and do well for that team as well as for Fred. We know he's watching at home, so caution is out. And I hear I hear a car spinning somewhere. That's Arca Brakes. Okay. Oh, more Arca Brakes. Scott Wimmer's out. What even happened here? So we're going to take it back and see what just happened. I saw the nine of Bill Elliott around as we were looking back through the field. Oh. <coughs> yeah, four wide doesn't work. I'm not sure why we have to learn this lesson yet, but four wide off the of turn two. Jeremy Mayfield up into the outside wall, back down in the Robbie Gordon and nowhere for the rest of the pack to go. I mean, that's Kenny Schrader up into the outside wall. Whoa, Hermie Sattler barely squeaked through there. Ryan Newman didn't. Gets hit again by Scott Wimmer. And uh, we're going to take another look at that from uh, a different angle. Bobby Labonte went down the track, and he, he was... One of the fastest cars here today. That's a shame. Oh, Bill Elliott gets hit. Just gets clipped there. Late in that accident. But yeah, that's a shame for all of those guys. They were fast. Bobby Labonte had led laps in his race. And now he's done. That's just how quickly things happen. We'll be right back with more coverage here on Fox of the MD Cup Series. And we are back. I can't be bothered to go back. This is a really long race anyway, so yeah. Green flag is back out. Michael Walter, for some reason, decided to start in front of the field instead of dropping to the back. 
but he's going to drop back there very quickly anyway, without really too much of an issue as he gets turned right as I say that big hit. Nowhere for Jeff Burton or Boris said to go, and the caution's going to come right back out. A massive impact here to Michael Walter. Nowhere for Jeff Burton to go, and that's an immediate caution right on the restart. Let's take another look at what happened here. Army Sattler tried to go low. Tried to go high, just ran out of time. I mean, he had plenty of time to make a decision. He just couldn't. Well, we say that, but that's probably a split-second thing. Trying to go low. Mikey's going low. So he tries to cut high, but at that point, it's way too late. Round goes to 15. Into the inside wall. Hard hit into the passenger side door. And honestly, we're lucky we're getting passenger, the passenger, passenger door hits and not driver side ones because those would turn out a lot worse than this but I'm glad we're not going like 213 like we were in Atlanta it's another look at it and we do have an onboard with Michael Waltrip and with Jeff Burton so let's go on board with them He was just hoping to get through it. Ran out of time there. So uh, we're gonna go. We're gonna go on another break here, <sighs> and uh, we'll be back for the drop in the next screen. Daryl Walter up in the second, by the way. Green flag is back out. We're racing once again here in Texas. And look at Kevin Harvick pull way out ahead on the restart, but draft is so important here. They're going to drive right back up to him with ease. I thought I heard him. I thought I heard an impact, but I guess not. Ha literally, like, half of the field is just, there is done. I mean, the last car on the track right now is the 97th of, okay, that's the lead lap. Uh, last lap car on the track would be Kyle Petty in, fifth, in 25th place. So literally half of the field is gone. We're only 44 laps in. I mean, we're almost at halfway, but we're not there yet. So We might get a good green flag run here. And look at Chris Mack working his way up through the pack, trying to get him as much draft as he possibly can. Got right up to the left rear quarter panel at that 90. Luckily, he didn't turn him, but he's wheeling that thing into the... That thing, you, we know he is not... He is not having it easy here today. That car has got so much rear-end damage and aerodynamic damage to that car that he's probably got a handful in there, so... He's still wheeling it, though. The engine ain't hurt, so he's gonna keep on going. Now he's up to the back bumper of John and Dreddy. And try to get past him on the inside. He got the tip. Yeah, clipped the apron. And that got him loose. He had to check up a way. Uh, he had to check way up there. So, uh, I am. I'm sorry for my. I'm not sure what happened to my brain. I always struggle to speak in, when I'm in front of people. I'm not sure why. But when I'm on my own, I'm completely fine, so I'm, I'm not sure what's going on here. But, uh, yeah. Uh, loud, uh, what? 
<laughs> Please ignore me tongue twisting myself and uh, just enjoy this great race. As we are three wide once again for the lead now as Jimmy Johnson heads to the inside, but Daryl Waltrip, who came out of retirement to replace Steve Park, did leave that lead that lap. Now looking at four wide here. Looking at five wide. And into the wall goes Jimmy Spencer. And the caution's going to come back out. Oh, and a big hit for Spencer. Hermie Sadler nailed him. And that's going to take both of them out of the race. And DW... Got a piece of it as well. But for the most part, he's fine. Meanwhile, coming back around to the line, Dale Jarrett is going to lead the lap, I believe. Or lead to the green. No, Ricky Rudd led it. All right. So, uh, yeah, we'll be back for the drop of the green flag. And just a couple more laps here. We are back. The green flag is back out. Dale Jarrett leading because green flag or caution flag pit stops are a thing and they change up the order here and there. So Dale Jarrett back out in, excuse me, back out in front in one of these races. He was up towards the front at uh, Bristol last week. And now he's here leading at Texas. Rick Craven was another one out in front, but uh, they were only out in front because the top contenders, the favorites to win, got trapped a lap down there after a caution came out during green flag pit stops. So this will be very interesting to see how this, to see how this uh, plays out. Luckily, I don't think there should be that should be an issue because we can't really see. To get a good green flag run going as the caution is out once again. I wonder what it was this time. Pen Trader has a lot of damage, so he is the main suspect. Let's see what happened here. Three wide on the front stretch. Trader's falling back. Gets clipped by John Andretti and hard into the wall. Into the wall. Goes John Andretti and Adam Petty. Petty, or excuse me, not John, Kenny Schrader. And, and, and Kyle Petty. Did I say Adam Petty? I'm not even sure. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm losing it here, y'all. <laughs> but, um, yeah, Kyle, Kyle Petty and Ken Schrader going to the wall after contact with John and Dreddy. That's a hard impact for the both. Petty didn't have it as bad, but still a really good hit in the wall. Shouldn't slow him down too much, but still gonna probably slow him down. Green flag is back out. Brett Bodine leading to the green with Dale Jarrett right behind him. Jarrett with a ton of speed looking to the inside. Can he, can't quite there, quite get there. As he comes off of turn two, now he's there heading into turn three. And out of turn four, look at Ricky Craven getting side by side with him now. He's come to the start finish line. Caution is out. Big surprise there. What happened here? And they're still running over each other under caution. I believe 
Greg Biffle is our suspect here. Let's see. Did the Biff wreck it? Did he Biff it? That would have been a good joke. I'm sorry. I missed out on my opportunity to say, did the Biff Biff it? Yes, he did. Three wide out of the trioval or quad or whatever it's called. Did not work. And ended a wall with a 16. Luckily, no one hit him. That's the first right there. I've never seen a wreck with this package where someone spins and doesn't get hit. Green flag is back out. Mark Martin is your leader with Dale Jr. right behind him. Here comes Jimmy Johnson to the inside, down the back stretch. As Mark Martin tries to pull away, which is impossible because of the... I'm sorry, I had a text from my mom, had to read, but... I should probably respond to it, you know? <laughs> All right, I am back. Uh, yeah, we are three wide for like fifth. But here comes the four of Mike Skinner. Looking for the lead here in that Pontiac Kodak, or, or that Kodak Pontiac. But here comes Jeff Gordon to steal that le the lead from him and keep him from leading a lap. But now here comes Ricky Craven on his inside. Dave Blaney on his inside. Now, three wide behind him for about sixth. And here comes Ricky Rudd with a massive run down the back stretch. Has to push Mark Martin past Dave Blaney. Martin goes to the lead. So now Mark Martin's back out in front, but maybe not for long because Ricky Craven, or Ricky Rudd, excuse me, he wants that lead and he's going to get it right here. But here comes Brett Bodine. This is starting to remind me of that predictable. Uh, AI racing from NR 2003 where whoever gets the bottom takes the lead and then they slide up and lose the lead and fall back and then, yeah, but It is what it is. I, I'm, it's the, the package is not perfect. Yeah, I still have to work on it a little bit and I believe we have a no We do not good. So we're gonna get it. We're gonna get a good green flag run going here as Mike Skinner comes back on the inside Here comes Jeff Gorham back on his inside These guys are all over the place. Here's Jimmy Johnson. Gonna push Dave Blaney past Jeff Gordon. And now looking to the inside, he's gonna try to take the lead himself. Kenny Wallace on the inside, and he's gonna try to take the lead. Ooh, they're, that is tight off of turn two there. That almost caused some calamity there. It's one big tight pack here. I'm not sure how they're making it this long. Very skilled, talented drivers here. As here comes Mark Martin now to the inside, looking for the lead. Brett Bodine right behind him. Mike Skinner behind Bodine. Here comes Bodine and Skinner to the inside. Bodine slides up. Skinner. Looking to the inside, couldn't quite get there in time to lead the lap, but he's just trying to get back out in front, and maybe he can lead a lap, but Jeff Gordon keeps preventing that from happening as he's right back on Mike Skinner's inside. They're four wide for a split second and almost caused a wreck. Luckily, Bodine was able to clear Mark Martin, and now they're four wide once again. Oh no, this is not going to end well. This is not going to end well. Nope, it's not ending well at all. There it goes. Big wreck. Mark Martin's involved in it. 
Oh, and they're all slapping the outside wall on the front stretch here. Across the start finish line. Here comes Elias Sattler sliding into it backwards. Huge hit from Kyle Petty. And we got a big wreck on the front stretch. There's DW smacking in and went late. What even happened here? We're going to go on board with Elliot Sattler first off because he just slid into, into the wreck backwards out of the grass. They were racing back to the line. He tries to go down and block and he's just not clear. Probably went down to try to avoid the wreck. Didn't realize there was a car on its inside. Chris Mack was down there. Watch this, as he tries to, yeah, he stayed towards the bottom. Chris Mack probably expected him to slide up towards the top a little more, which is a preferred racing line. And around he went, and in slow motion, we watch here, is that 86 went sliding sideways through the grass. I'm not sure how he was able to save that. Kyle Petty, with a huge hit, he, was, he came flying through. All the smoke, and then there was a wild Brett Bodine just sitting there, and he nailed it. He nailed him. And what happened to Daryl Waltrip in the one? DW was trying to get through. Oh, he's in the smoke. He's lost in the smoke, slapped the outside wall, and in a Jimmy Johnson he goes. Didn't really make too much of a difference, but it did dent up the right side of that car. We're going to take a look at the main wreck now to see what happened here on the front stretch. So they were four wide. Back down to three. But they were all over each other, making contact here. R Ricky Craven and Jimmy Johnson make contact there. And that's going to send them into the wall. Jimmy gets turned. We're going to go on board with Jimmy in slow motion into the outside wall. No way for a lot of these guys to go. Multiple cars getting airborne. You saw Brett Bodine's rear end was off the ground after he felt the impact. Then Mark Martin climbed over someone. And then all of these guys are along for the ride. And of course, that's the track curves they're going to go straight into the wall once again and tear up their cars even more and then Elliot Sattler there you see them way back there Sattler getting hooked sideways he's going to slide through the grass as we go back full speed and then bang right into the wreck and then oh Oh, a very late hit for Daryl Walter. These guys could not see a thing. They were on the brakes and they just couldn't really do much about it. Let's go on board with DW here. Oh, yep. Got up into the outside wall and... Oh, luckily slowed down a lot before he actually made an impact there. So, we're going to go to break here. We'll be right back for the drop the green flag once again. Green flag is back out. Mike Skinner in second. Got a lap car of John and Dreddy in front of him. As Dale Jarrett has the lead and he pulls away. But once again, due to the draft, that's not going to last too long. Here comes Jeff Gordon with a big run. These guys up in the lead. All the people that are left really are the ones that are staying out of trouble. Look at all these torn up race cars back here in, the, in their own little pack. We've got two separate packs. Packs. Excuse me. One, not really a pack, just a couple of cars that have broken away. Uh, completely untouched. Jason Hedelski in that pack. John Andretti's in that pack, but he's lapped. And uh, Mike Skinner. So a couple of guys that can get their first career wins. Or a couple of guys that can get their first win to the season. Dale Jr. 
he's untouched. He's been undamaged and untouched for the entire race, but just lost the draft. So did Kenny Wallace. Chris Mack, one of the fastest of the damaged cars, trying to work his way back up through the field. The only non-AI car in this race has worked his way back up inside the top 10. Now he's going to try to get past Kenny Wallace in the 23. He's gone low. And he's cleared him. Beautiful pass by that 86 car. Meanwhile, out in front, Jeff Gordon holding on in the lead, but Dale Jarrett in his draft trying to get to him here. He's going to have a good run down the back stretch. Didn't quite close in on him as I thought he would, but maybe he needs to run a slightly lower line. There he goes. He's running slightly lower. Get some clean air and to get some. Uh, Some of that draft while well, he takes a slightly shorter way around the track. So that might help him out a bit here. I've noticed that about NR2003 AI. Probably less of the clean air thing. I don't think it really I don't think that really affects you too much in a thing. It might, but I've never seen it affect AI cars. Dale Jr. falling back here. Chris Mack is up into the top five with a just absolutely destroyed car. He's been in multiple wrecks here today. Further back, we got battles all over the place here. With Jeff Gordon and Dale Jarrett still going at it here. Jarrett. Closing in on Jeff Gordon. But just can't quite get there. The tire wear is starting to become a factor now. They're slowing way down in the corners. Kevin Harvick coming. Uh, they're coming up on uh, Kevin Harvick. They might lap him soon here. Chris Mack starting to feel the effects of those worn tires. If he's going to fall back a little bit here. He's going to drop back and be passed by Kenny Wallace and Ricky Rudd, it seems. Sooner or later. And another thing with that 86 car. They've lost third gear. So on these restarts, they have to lay back and in fourth gear and try to get a good jump so they can at least keep up with the pack when the restarts and not get left behind. And they lost third gear on lap 50, around lap 55. So they've been dealing with that for a long time. Not sure how they're able to do it, but they're doing it. And that 86 team is just determined to finish this race. That's all they want is just to finish. We're going to take a quick break here. We'll be back. And I feel like I just heard a car spin. Oh, they we almost did. Jason Hedelski up into the outside wall. Chris Mack got tight up underneath them there. And so much for that 90 being completely undamaged. So, yeah, we're going to go to break. Be back in a couple of laps. And welcome back. The caution is out for an incident on the track involving Dale Earnhardt Jr. And um, we're going to show you what happened right now. Dale Jr. is not happy at all here. He's running up inside the top 10. And just take a look. Contact with Chris Mack. He was up on the high side and just not and a really hard impact for that eight car head on into the outside wall. Let's take a look. Another look here. Watch towards the left of your screen. As he goes head on, 
hard into the outside wall. I'm not sure that looked like it was harder than his auto club crash. But luckily, he seems to be all right, just more angry, if anything. So yeah, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Won last week at Bristol, not having a good day here today. Well, he was until that happened. Still going to be able to continue. But we'll be right back with the drop of green. Green flag is back out. We're racing once again here at Texas. We're getting down towards the end now. That was... We got like... Five laps... Or coming up on five laps to go. So we head down the back stretch and into turn three. Dave Blaney to the inside of Dale Jarrett. Looking at taking the lead away from... Jeff Gordon, if he can get up there, he doesn't have that much help. Not a lot of cars left in this race, so these guys are going to have to work together if they want to get up there. The two Fords could possibly try to, the three Fords could possibly try to make something happen. Big run on the outside for Mike Skinner. Almost gets shoved into the outside wall by Ricky Craven as they got stuck together there for a second. Dale Jarrett heading down the pit road. He's not going to make it on fuel. Tough break for him. Jeff Gordon still leading. As we head down the back stretch now. We're just coming to three to go. This time by Dale Jer or Dave Blaney. Trying to catch him here. He's right there behind him. Three laps to go here in Texas. And Blaney is catching. Heading into turn three once again. Jeff Gordon is pitting. Heading down pit road. Not able to make it on fuel. So that's a shame for him as well. Two laps to go for Dave Blaney. And now here comes Ricky Rudd on his inside. Kevin Harvick following as well. As we're coming around to the final lap this time by here. Oh wait, Dave Blaney's not even he's not even on the lead lap. What am I talking about? These are lap cars going at it here. White flag is out for Ricky Rudd one more time around. But here comes Kenny Wallace on the inside. How about that for a few good story. Kenny Wallace, one of the underdogs, trying to win it here. Look at Mike Skinner right there behind him. Didn't have anything left. Kenny Wallace is going to get a Cup Series win at Texas. How about that for unexpected? And look who, look who fin what? Look who finishes fourth. The 86 of Chris Mack with only three gears. With the first, okay, four gears. Um, with the reverse, of course, first, second, and fourth gear. With missing third gear and a heavily damaged car, luck goes his way to bring that car home fourth place. Papyrus Racing is going to be very happy about that. The Papyrus Racing team gets a fourth place finish on at their comeback at the track that they that their former driver was injured in a career-ending accident. How about that? So, um, that'll do it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe, and, uh, hope to see you guys next time. Till then, peace. Wait, um, also, uh, late model videos. I'm gonna be recording that as well, so we should get a few more late model race videos by next weekend, hopefully. If I have any replays, if not, I'll have to do a few races and I probably won't record them until next weekend. So, yeah, um, that's basically why I can't have any videos, but I'll see you guys next time, until then.